everyone, Shelly here. Today I'm starting the first color pass on my portrait of Clementine. I'll be painting in the selective start method beginning with her left eye. I'll be painting directly on top of my dried monochrome underpainting. I've prepared my painting palette ahead of time with the oil paints listed here. If you want to see how I created these colors, there is a video out um, came out last week that shows you how I mixed the skin tones for this portrait of Clementine. This eye is about one inch long from corner to corner. I'm using a brush that is a five over zero spotter. It's very tiny. It's a tiny area and I wanna have good control over putting down my colored shapes. And this tiny brush gives me full control over being able to do that. So while this is a portrait, it's not a commissioned portrait. So I'm gonna take creative license with my reference image. I'm not going to be copying it and recreating it exactly as it looks in the photo that I took. I want to use it just as a guide and I want to be able to add more of a creative um, look to this face. I have an idea of where I'm heading with this portrait. I'm not gonna reveal it just yet to you, I'll do that later on in another video when we get closer to finishing <laughs> this portrait of Clementine. Really what I want you to take away from what I just said is I don't want you to be a slave to your reference material. I want you to use it as a guide. Let your creativity first and foremost dictate how you paint your portrait. You are not a slave to that reference image. You are the master of your painting and you are in control of how you interpret the reference image. Clementine is giving us a direct gaze. What this means to you as the artist is when you're painting the iris and the pupil, they need to be perfectly round because she's looking directly at you. Now, if her head was turned slightly, you would be adjusting the roundness of the iris to more of an elliptical. But with this direct gaze, it's perfectly round. If you're interested in learning more about painting eyes, I have a free, full-length, in-depth painting tutorial on how to paint eyes. In this tutorial, I really break it down step-by-step step for you. Uh, you can grab this free, tutorial in the description below. So while you're painting any structure of the face in a portrait, you need to keep in mind the direction that your light source is coming from. Where's the light hitting the face? What side of the face? Is it coming from on top, underneath, directly from the side? Is it coming from behind? Is the portrait backlit? So with that in mind, we can see, just from the little bit of reference that I'm showing you here, my light source is coming from the left side. It's probably coming a little bit above her as well. Now, keep in mind, she's wearing a hat, so there is going to be some shadow coming across the forehead, and this left eye is the side where the light's coming in, so it's getting a little bit more light. But as we move across to that right eye, it's gonna need to be painted a little bit darker than the left eye, which is the side of her face where the light is coming in. I really hate the idea of rules when it comes to painting, but that being said, there is a couple of things that I really like to keep in mind when it comes to painting especially eyes of a portrait. And that is that the white of the eye is never white. It's very dark. If you analyze your reference material in Photoshop with the eyedropper tool, oh my gosh, I'll, the most of the times when I look at that, it's so much darker than I ever expected it to be. So you can kind of see here in the reference material that her eye looks pretty white compared to the values around it. But when you analyze it, you'll see that it's very close. If you look at it in black and white, um, the value of the white of the eye is gonna be close to the same value as the skin of the face. 
And to push the 3D effect of this eye, we're going to notice that the left side of the white of the eye is a little bit lighter in value than on the right side where it's towards the inner corner. The light is not hitting that side as much. Remember, the eyeball is round and we're painting this as if it were a sphere. So we're gonna get a little bit lighter on the left side and darken it as we come around and move into the corner of the eye. That's gonna help push the 3D effect in our face. The other thing to notice as far as the value of the eye, it's a little bit darker at the top of the eye along the lash line because the eyelid is creating a little bit of a shadow on the eyeball. And it'll be a little bit lighter along that lower lash line. It's getting more light there. Would you like to learn more about portrait painting? I have several in-depth portrait painting tutorials on my website, sjcportraitcourse.com. You can go there and learn more about these portrait tutorials. There's also some critique options for you there as well. You'll find a link to this website in the description below this video. So I've done some master painting copies in the past and what I've learned from looking at these masterful painters like Bouguereau and Van Dyck is that there's really not hard edges in their eyes. Um, so I like to paint my iris and I like to pull a little bit of the white of the eye in towards the iris and I like to pull a little bit of the iris in towards the white of the eye just to soften those edges ever so slightly. Another thing I like to do when painting a portrait is I like to pick one eye and make that the vocal point meaning it's going to be in more focus than the other eye. Now I'm not talking about completely blurring uh, the other eye so that you can't make it out unless it's in a really dark shadow, then that would work. But in this sense, uh, Clementine is giving us a direct gaze. However, there's more light coming in on that left eye. So this is gonna allow me to really punch up some of the definition on the left side and keep the right eye much softer and a little bit darker because it is getting less light. Now let's say your portrait uh, model has a three-quarter view. Her head's turned slightly. What I like to do there is the eye that's closest to the viewer is going to be my vocal point. It's going to have more definition, be in more focus with the eye that's further away from the viewer, I'm gonna soften that one and let that one be slightly more blurry. I've moved to a little bit bigger brush and also I'm using a comber brush, which I just love. It allows me to overlap my brush strokes and they just kind of weave themselves together. I don't have to do blending. And I tend to go back and forth between that brush and now the Zero Rosemary Soft sable-like brush. It's not sable hair, it's um, synthetic sable hair, but it's a very soft brush. With Selective Start, you want to lay down your brush strokes either on top of slightly overlapping or directly next to the brush stroke that came before it. So you're not really working across the face in different areas. Each successive brush stroke is going to be touching the paint that you laid down just before that one. I like to get some skin flush colors into the upper eye, the eyelid, around the bottom of the eye before I attempt to do any sort of um, eyelashes or eyebrows. I like to be able to pull the paint of those hairs into flush paint. Nothing kills the look of a masterfully painted eye than putting in many individual dark, dark eyelashes that are just painted one, you can see them perfectly one after the other. Um, that's just not a look that I desire. As compared to my reference image, I've toned down the saturation in the skin color that I'm painting here. 
I don't want a lot of saturation initially. I can always go back and glaze on top of the dried flesh in areas where I want to punch up the saturation, but I find it much more difficult to tone down saturation if I lay it on too heavy initially. In the areas where the eye is more in shadow, like towards the corner of the eye and underneath the inner area of the eyebrow, I, I'm putting the paint on thinly. I like to let a little bit of the underpainting show through in some of the areas of the shadows. You'll notice a lot of the master painters doing this. You can put the paint on lightly even in areas, uh, for instance, the corner of the eye where there's a little bit more pink coming through. You can let the warmth of the underpainting show through there as well. Now you may have noticed that I keep painting in this line of the eyelid, which is very dark, but I don't want it to be super harsh. I want the edge of that line to soften, so I paint it in and then I kind of mess it up again. And then I go back and I put it in again and then I try to mess it up a little bit again. So you just keep ebbing and flowing and pulling that line in and out of focus and, and until you feel like you've got it where you want it. When in doubt, err on the side of softness. So since the light is coming in from the left side, it's going to travel through the iris slightly. And so I have my highlight on the upper left side of the eye, of that area where the pupil is in the iris, which means there's gonna be a little bit of light coming through that bottom right side of the iris. You can see I've kind of punched that up and put that in a little bit more than what you can see in my reference. It's there in the reference, but I'm playing it up more here in the portrait painting. <laughs> the other thing to note here is I really slowed down and took my time painting this eye. It took three to four hours for me to complete just this small bit of her face. Remember, this is a one inch eye from corner to corner. It's not very large, close to life size, but yeah, not very big. But I kept telling myself just take your time and really develop this eye before you move away into the other eye. I just really want it to have a almost completely finished look before I move away from it. And I wanna even take some risk and play up some of the highlights and darken some of the shadows to really punch up the contrast. And I'm doing it while the paint is still wet. So if for instance, I put down something and I don't like it, I can have it adjusted right there on the spot and not have to worry about coming back to dried paint, which is more difficult to fix at that point. My mentor, Tina Garrett, always says, there's no prize for whoever paints fast. There's only prizes for painting well. So I'm back to that teeny tiny five over zero spotter brush. I'm reworking the eye and I want to look at the eye for its tiny individual shapes. Now this is a very small feature on the face. So the shapes that I'm seeing are very small. So it's like looking at the eye as if it were a puzzle and you're putting together each little colored puzzle piece. You're putting it in the correct spot, in the correct value, in the correct color. Since we're painting on top of our underpainting, the values are somewhat worked out for me ahead of time, so I don't have to think about that too much, but I am adjusting the contrast, so there is that to think about. Here you can see I've put in some of the eyelashes. I've pretty much grouped them together. So if you look at the reference material, I haven't painted even as many individual eyelashes as you can see there in the reference. And even that has the eyelashes grouped somewhat, but I've grouped them even more. 
another thing, I haven't painted the eyelashes with pure black either. I don't even have pure black on my palette. I have chromatic black, which I also did a video about chromatic black versus ivory black. You can go back and check that out. But chromatic black is semi-transparent. And I've also toned it down here and made it a little bit more grayed so that the eyelashes can just uh, sort of be put in in a soft way. I'm going to continue to push up some of the shadow and 3D dimensionality of the eye. And here in this left corner, I'm tr you want to push it back into the head. And I'm doing that by pulling some of that darker pink into that outer corner of her eye. Because remember, the eyeball is round and it's going to sink into the head a little bit more in that outer corner. So what do you think the most important feature on the face is to actually capture the likeness of a sitter during a portrait painting? It's the eyebrows. <laughs> so if you're really going for a commissioned portrait or you really want to capture the likeness of your person that you're painting, you must get their eyebrows painted perfectly in the sh correct shape and how it sits on their face. So the other thing I don't like to see with eyebrows is hard edges. So you want to make sure that you're pulling some of that flesh into the edges of your eyebrow. Now, since I went ahead and put down some skin color before putting in the eyebrow, uh, it's going to help to soften up those edges just automatically. But you can go back in and do it even more. Now, the way that the light hits the eyebrow, it's going to put a little bit of a shadow at the bottom eyebrow line. So you can go ahead and kind of shadow that underneath the eyebrow line a little bit. And you can play back and forth with, you know, darkening areas of the eyebrow, lightening areas. So it gets a little bit lighter towards the outer edge of the, of the eyebrow and it gets a little bit lighter towards the um, inner eyebrow area. So as you're moving uh, across the eyebrow, usually above the iris of the eye, that's where the hairs are a little bit more dense. So you're going to get a little more darkness there. But pay attention to the, the shape of the eyebrow and how the light's hitting it and try to get that captured perfectly in your portrait. So I'll bring this eye to almost a complete finish and I'll let it dry. And once it's dry, then I'll look at it again and make any final adjustments that I feel are necessary. I may not make any adjustments, but I do like to go back to the finished area, especially after I get the other eye or the nose painted in. There may be areas of contrast or um, some of the tones that I want to make adjustments to and once it's dried then that's the perfect time to do that So I appreciate you guys. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more of the Clementine portrait coming soon